So today we are going to talk about the Zohar and to understand and to know if the Zohar impact the Alaha or not and how they work together and how they coordinate between each other. So the basic is that the Moshe Rabbeinu g- gave us the Torah. He put everything together at once. It seems the Torah is including the whole part of this, which is Pshat, Drash, Remez, and Sod. And Sod, which is coming from the Zohar, is part of the Torah. By the time that the Jewish nation was sitting all around the world, each one or each group, what was in a certain town or certain country, they behave as they saw themselves by the Jewish law that coming from the Torah to make and, par- and practice the Torah. By that time, slowly we came to when we come to the country and then Maran, uh, Yosef Karo, he gave the halakha for us how to behave here in Israel, all of us together. This is what we have the halakha now here in Israel. The point is that the halakha is coming from the Torah as it is. Understanding of Rabbi Yosef Karo the primitive of the let's say the sword of the of the of the Torah is not impacting what the Zohar is saying. So if I can describe it and I can say that the Alakha is coming from the point something the minimum things that we have to do I can say the minimum what what we have to do to keep it as to be as a Jewish and not breaking the Torah rules. But in other hand and like any other things we can do, we can do it like because we have to do it as it is, or we can say, I love it, and I want to make it more carefully and to do more even that I have to do just to make it. For example, if I bring my parents for, for a dinner or for a lunch to sit with us, my obligation for them, as, as the Torah said, is say, Kabele Tavicha Timcha. This is what I should do. This is the, this is part of what I should do. But I can bring them the the dish. I can bring them the plate. I can bring them the knife and the fork and let them yeah, please eat. It's fine. This is one way that the Allah has said. But on the other hand, I can make the table. I can arrange the food. I can heat it. I can put it on the plate. I can make everything ready for them to be nice and well and be more like Macpit that everything will be exactly the as they like it or as they want it. That's the difference we can find between the Allah and the Zohar. The Zohar said, I want to be more careful. I want to do it more as my heart is there to give it more as I really want. Not because I want, I have to do it, because I really want to do it more carefully. So we can find places like that, that the Allah will say one thing and the Zohar will say, but it's not something that they, I say, opposite from each other. But uh, I can say that, for example, I can say that uh, the Zohar said that uh, every souda that you want to make, you have to have a bread. There is no souda without bread. This is what the Zohar said. This is even for Shabbos, if I want to do, I have to be sure that every meal that I'm eating, we have bread and we have to bless on the bread, and, and etc., etc. But Allah, I don't have to do it. It's not a have to. Well, we can have a slow down, we can eat, and even if I didn't have if I have them or not, it's still fine, I can keep it, and for me it's, it's okay. So it's not something against them, but it is making one complete, because wh- whatever the Zohar says is part of the Torah, the Torah is there. It's been, don't forget that the, the whole Primeut and the whole Zohar is coming from the Torah. So the Torah is capturing inside the Pshat, Drash, and Remez, and Sod, so the Sod is part of the Zohar. So it's not something, never, never, there is not something against each other more than like going to more details and taking care of more things for us to be able to say, yes, we want to do it more carefully. And we, we call it like the Hasidut. What, what is Hasidut? I want to be more careful, do things really I want to do them. If, if, I, if it will take me another half an hour to pray Shachrit, Fine, nothing happens. Some others said, no, we don't have time, we are hurry, please, let's go, finish quickly. Fine. This, it's, mean, it's two different things for us. If you, 
once it's happened to you and you'll go to the shul that the Mekubarim is praying, you come like uh, 4.30 in the morning and you finish Shachrit 8 o'clock in the morning or 8.30 in the morning, and the other guy is coming in 5 o'clock in the morning and 6.10, they're already out and finish the Shachrit and say, what's the difference? This, that's the pre Shachrit and this is pre Shachrit. Yes, they pray it more carefully, they make the Kavanot, by, 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 as, as the sword is saying, they have to do it and they do it. They're not in that way. So it's not something that you say we have and we impact the halacha. No, the opposite. I say if you like, if you want to do it and do it more carefully, quite with the Hasidut. We spend another half an hour, we spend another two minutes, and we spend another ten minutes, but nothing is opposite from the other. It's not impa impacting each other. Someone is going from the Hasidut, and he look on the other guy going as the halacha said and say, so, oh, this guy is not good, he's not ex No, he's good enough, he's doing what the Bible said, he's what the Torah said, he's doing it, it's okay, he's still okay. By that, we understand that one of the most important things for us, we have to look what really the Pneumites wa want from us. If I look on the Torah, I said, listen, do I understand the Torah? Do I know what really what the Torah says? Abbe uh, Lazar, Rabbi Shimon Sanz, is saying the the Bible, the Torah, have a lot of stories. So I can say, look, I read the Torah, I understand the stories, I like it. Good stories for kids, good stories for us to grow up and say, oh, Avram Avinu, Noah, fine, it's uh, Egypt, getting out from Egypt, it's at Mitzrayim, it's nice. That's really, I can say, this is the Torah. This really, so one point, one word, we have to understand together. It's when if I'm going into that, I want to understand what's the meaning of the Torah. The word Torah is what? It's something like rules, it's something like principle, it's something that is structure for us to live, to let any society or any idea or principle that they want to work, like Einstein, whatever he gave us and teach us, or any other rules that we have in this world that will exist. So this is the Torah. So how come in something that is so important we have stories there? It should be rules clear, like our Moshe Rabbeinu should come and say, really, this is the 613 mitzvah that you have to do A, B, C, D, and let's continue on. This is the chukim and mishpatim that you have to follow. And that was the easiest one for us to understand it. So fine, it's there. So why the Torah bring us stories? So one guy tell you, you know what? We have to know what's happened before. And we have to know where it's done. So the answer is no. It's fine. We should know. This is the history is there. That was the something very... I can say genius. It's, um, even, I can say genius because our mind cannot understand it. But Moshe Rabbeinu put in the stories the secret of the Bible. So for us, it's if I really want to know what is there, I have to understand the stories because inside of it, there is the whole, the, the whole premiere is there. The whole thought is inside of the story. I have to open the story and to understand what's inside is there. So if I go and look and I read the stories, I'll not be able to understand it. But thanks God. God told, uh, or I can say not God, I can say, Eliyahu Navi talked to Rabbi Shimon and told him in Sefer Azor, in the, in the, we call it Patach Eliyahu, and he talked to him and he told him, listen, you got permission to write whatever the Pneumiot, whatever the thought is. Why? Because until that time, the whole Zohar, the whole Pnimiut was going from generation to generation verbally. Never was writing. They had a good memory to know everything, to understand everything, and to remember everything. But no question, they could not write it. So Rabbi Shimon Bar Chai got this permission to be able to write it and bring it to us. For us, is to open the Zohar and to study it. To study why to study the Zohar. The question is coming because it is part of the Torah. It's part of what God, God gave us inside of the whole Torah, like we can say that, that we have 
the whole part this shot rush ram is in salt so the salt is coming from the zohar he opened it for us the key for us is learn it know it go inside what is i can say this is the core of the torah the core of the torah is the secret of the torah so for us is to say you want to talk you want do you want to know the torah study the premier because this is the core if i want to build the building I have to build the shield. I have to build the core of the building to build on everything on it. So to build it, that's th this is the point. For us to be able to study the Torah is something that we have to do it. We have to go into that to be able to build. Some of them said, listen, we don't understand it. It's written in Aramaic. What I have to do with Aramaic? I, so it's too far from me. The Zohar says in Tikkun Mem Gimel, don't worry about that. Because the words that we are taking out from our mouth by reading the Zohar it is it, as it is, we built upstairs things that we never thought we can do it by ourselves. So 